You are watching Ballistic Coffee Boy. Welcome to Expresso, episode 17. Ballistic Coffee Boy here, your host. This time, I want to take a look at a game called Reactor, which came out in 1983 by Parker Brothers. This game I happen to enjoy quite a bit, so I do want to go over quite a bit, though, I see about this game. So, from Wikipedia, it says, now this is also talking about the arcade game from Gottlieb, which this is based on. It says, Reactor is an arcade game released in 1982 by Gottlieb. The object of the game is to cool down the core of a nuclear reactor without being pushed into its walls by swarms of subatomic particles. Reactor was developed by Tim Skelly, who previously designed and programmed a series of vector graphics arcade games for Cinematronics, including Ripoff. It was the first arcade game to credit the developer on the title screen. Reactor was ported to the Atari 2600 by Charlie Heath, and published by Parker Brothers the same year as the original, in 83. It also says here, it was actually released in 82, but I see 83 as well, just FYI. I might be talking about the arcade game versus the video game. Uh, so the controls cons consist of a trackball and two buttons, energy and decoy. Now this is for the arcade game. The player controls a ship that can move freely within a nuclear reactor, seen from the top down. Swarms of particles follow the player and bounce off each other, the player's ship, and the reactor core. Any object touching the outer kill wall of the reactor is destroyed. Pressing the energy button during a collision with the particle wall will cause it to bounce away at a higher speed. While touching the core is not harmful, it continually grows in size, restricting the available space for movement. Two sets of control rods protrude from the kill wall. If the player knocks particles into the rods of one set, the core shrinks to its minimum size before starting to grow again. The player starts the game with a limited number of decoys, which can be deployed by pressing the decoy button in order to lure particles toward the kill wall. Control rods are either of the two small bonus chambers at opposite corners of the screen. An extra decoy is earned by knocking out both sets of rods. The player earns points for destroying particles or luring, knocking them into the bonus chamber so that they bounce off the walls. A set number of particles must be destroyed in order to complete each level. In later levels, the core is replaced by a slowly expanding vortex that can attract the player's ship and destroy it on contact. One or both of the bonus chambers may be briefly sealed off at times, and the kill wall becomes invisible as well. One life is lost whenever the player's ship touches the kill wall or vortex. The game ends when all lives are lost, with bonus points awarded for each unused decoy. So the Atari 2600 version is obviously played with either a joystick or a trackball, it says here, though the latter is not mentioned in the manual. The difficulty switches set the sensitivity of the controls. There are no voiceovers, and the bonus counter is invisible. There's also an a television version. So I learned about this game from the Classic Game Room channel and No Story Gamer and many others along the way over the years and I picked this up I want to say the late 90s and my god I had a good time with it my sister at a 2600 we lived together in Dallas when like a 98 or so and um, gosh I had a great time playing this so um, I love the arcade game but this game is just as good it's addictive it's fun you get used to knocking these particles to the walls and luring them you, you, you drop the lure with the red button basically on this version you can also trap them in the chambers to earn a ton of bonus points Meanwhile, the center is expanding. It's pretty incredible. Anyway, I give this game a quad espresso. It's fantastic. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Subscribe, like, and comment.
You are watching Ballistic Coffee Boy. Boy.